Why Europe? They, they have been underperforming the U.S. Why do you think that changes? Yeah, that's one of the big reasons. Even going into this little crisis, the European equities were trading at significant discounts to U.S. Now, I would argue they should trade at some because U.S. companies tend to be a bit more profitable. But there was a pretty wide discount of conventional valuation measures. And then post this, as we're going through this market sell-off and this little crisis, we do see that the European stocks have underperformed by at least 10 percent. If you look at the Euro stock 50, which is down almost 30 percent, and S&P 500, which is, as we watch, is down about 17. So that valuation gap even has, has grown larger. And so I do believe there's good value, especially as we're starting to see European countries, which got hit first and earlier in many cases than the U.S., are starting to open up. Uh, you know, kids are going back to school. We're starting to see factories reopen, restaurants reopen, et cetera. So when you look at valuations, where we are in the crisis, I think Europe is, is better poised uh, from a starting point from where we sit today to achieve very, very strong numbers over the medium and long term. Um, I, I guess, David, uh, valuations, though, themselves are, are pretty hard to, to put your finger on at the moment, uh, given the uncertainty over the E part of, of, the, of the multiple. Uh, and what gives you confidence that that underperformance, which has persisted for quite a long time, you could make that valuation gap uh, argument at any point over the last decade, uh, well, what gives you confidence that now is the time it turns around? No, you're right. That gap has persisted, and there will be a gap, but I think it's just gotten so large today. And in many instances, these companies aren't so dissimilar. I mean, you have large global businesses like an Allianz Insurance, which, of course, owns PIMCO, like a Credit Suisse. These are global businesses, but they're based in Europe. They have great exposure, just as much as the U.S. does. To Some, some of these companies might even have greater U.S. revenues. If you take an Ashton, group, for instance, which is a U.K.-based, but it owns Sunbelt, it has 80 percent of its revenues from the U.S., and, you know, this is just, it trades at a discount to where it really should, because, you know, part, part of the reason is people are scared of Europe because of between Brexit and the sovereign debt crisis five or six years ago and the Greek crisis. This has scared people away despite the fact that earnings have been okay. They haven't been booming, but they've been okay. So if prices have dropped and earnings have been okay, that means that valuation gap has opened far more than it should be versus uh, non-European shares. I think you're even betting, David, on European banks, which has been among the hardest hit even before this all started, to Wilfred's point. You know, the idea of negative interest rates, even in this country where all the central bankers are falling over themselves to say we're not having negative interest rates, the banks are sinking. So, so why are the European banks a good bet? Yeah, this is really the opportunity because people believed that the negative and low rates in Europe would have destroyed the ability of these businesses to earn. And despite, despite the fact that we have seen for over a half decade, a better part of a decade, low and negative rates, these financials have been able to compound book value per share growth and earnings growth. And you ask yourself how and why. Yes, interest income has been strained, but they've been able to make up via cost efficiencies and non-interest non income, fee income, selling investment services, et cetera, et cetera. So despite the fact they've been able to maintain or grow earnings, you've seen uh, last year was an okay year for European financials, but this year's been terrible. I'm seeing blue chips like BNP Paribas down almost 50% year to date, and Tessa down 40, Credit Suisse down 40. I mean, these are businesses that have been able to protect and in some cases, like Credit Suisse in particular, grow their earning streams despite the low rates. And as a result, they're trading at 30 or 40 percent of book value, which is substantially below previous lows in 2007, 2008, 2009, when they had a lot less capital. So they're safer, they've diversified their earning streams, and they're valuation multiples are as low as they've ever been. This is why we believe there's such an opportunity here.